Thanks so much for having me here today. During the time that we have together, I'd like to talk to you about a community that I'm learning more about every day. And over the past year, I've really had the opportunity to appreciate more and more. And that community is West Dallas. And West Dallas is located just about 15 minutes southwest of here. And it's on the other side of the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge, which some of you may call the Calatrava Bridge. And West Dallas is a small community, only about 11.5 square miles, and about 24,000 people live there. And I want to talk about this community in part because it's the community where the work that I do every day is focused. And also because I think looking at this community gives us the opportunity to explore our perception, perceptions about community, and specifically communities where poverty exists, and to think about the ways in which we engage with those communities and how that engagement speaks to who we are as a larger community. So I'll start with a story. About six months ago, I was having dinner with a friend and we're sitting over at the bar and the restaurant manager comes to sit down next to us. And we start talking and we're laughing and we're sharing a bunch of different ideas about things. And at some point our conversation drifts to the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge, which had just opened at that time. And he was expressing his displeasure about this bridge and he was unhappy about how much money had been spent to build this bridge. And he called it the bridge to nowhere. And I was struck by this comment and quite honestly, I was offended. And what I'd like to do before I tell you how I responded to his comment <laughs> is to tell you what I heard in that comment. And what I heard was a value statement. I heard someone saying that probably because he didn't know anyone who lived in West Dallas, because he had probably never been to West Dallas, or because West Dallas offered him nothing that he felt was fulfilling or meaningful to him, it had no value, it had no significance, it had no importance to him. And what I realized in that moment was that he had missed the true beauty of the bridge and that it served as an opportunity to bridge the gap that had for too long existed in our city between two places. And most importantly, what he missed is that West Dallas is not just a place on the, on the other side of a bridge, but that it's a community of people. It's a community of people who have contributed richly and in many ways to the city that we live in and in the city that we love. He admits that it's a place where men and women get up and go to work every day. He missed that it was a place where mothers and fathers seek to care for and protect their children. He admits that it was a place where kids go outside and they play in the streets and they think of what they'll be one day. They think about sitting in this very room where we are right now. And so I said to him, you know, I live on the other side of that bridge. And while I don't live in West Dallas, I take that bridge home every day and just before entering West Dallas, I make a left and I go down the street to my house, which is about five minutes away. And I thought it was important for him to hear me say that and to see me and to know that the person that he had been talking with, we'd have been having this great conversation. He told me that my home was nowhere. And he told me that the place where I raised my son had no significance to him. But I also want to give him a little bit of grace. And I want to do that because I realized that my own experience with West Dallas is very new. Because like I said, I live in Oak Cliff and I lived there for three years. And I had no idea that West Dallas was my neighboring community. I never drift, drifted into West Dallas. I didn't know anyone who lived there. And so it was a community that was sort of invisible to me. And it made me think more about how communities become invisible to us. And what I realized is, most of us see West Dallas as a place where poverty exists. And because poverty exists there, we turn a blind eye. We isolate that community from the rest of the city and we make it invisible. And we walk away from West Dallas and we say good luck. And because this has happened for so long in communities like West Dallas or South Dallas or Oak Cliff, there have been some consequences. A positive consequence is that it's a community, West Dallas is, where people have really grown to depend upon each other. They look to each other for the things that they need. It's a place where when you go to the community, you can still see people sitting outside on their porch and they know their neighbors' names and they say hello to each other. And I think we can all admit that, that, that this is something that we've lost in our own communities. But one of the negative consequences that I'm reminded of each and every time I go to West Dallas is about their schools. The schools tend to be underperforming in West Dallas. So there's one public high school in West Dallas and at that school, over a four year period of time, more than a third of students will drop out of that school. And that has devastating effects, not just for that student and not just for that student's family, but for you and I and for the entire Dallas community. 
But we all know that a student doesn't decide to drop out of school in the 10th grade just out of nowhere. That happens much earlier on. So some things that we see that are different between low-income communities and affluent communities are in things like the listening vocabulary of a child. So in a community like West Dallas, a child will enter into kindergarten knowing about 3,000 words, whereas a child in a community like Highland Park will enter into kindergarten knowing about 20,000 words. So that means that that West Dallas child starts behind. It means that they're going to spend several months, if not years, just trying to catch up. We also know that by about the fifth grade, a child is deciding whether or not they're going to finish high school. And so the reason that these sorts of issues can continue is that we've said to those communities, you figure out that problem on your own. And I know that for many years, I found great comfort in the fact that I didn't have to deal with these issues because my son goes to private school. But that's just not true. This is something that we're all responsible for. I heard one, some, someone say recently, I take no comfort in knowing that the hole is on your side of the boat. But the reality is, <laughs> but the reality is that we can all play a part in making a difference. And it doesn't have to be in big ways. It doesn't have to be complicated. The work that we do every day here at SMU in West Dallas is about bringing a lot of different people to the table to figure out a way to increase the likelihood that students in West Dallas will graduate from high school ready for college or career. But I'd like to encourage you to think of little ways that you can begin to change your perception of a community like West Dallas and really see the people who live there. One thing is just find West Dallas on a map. It's okay if you don't know where it is, you can leave here and get on Google Maps and no one will be the wiser. So find out where it is on a map. Go there, drive through the neighborhood, experience the culture. See it as a place that is not painted by poverty, but as a place where people have contributed richly to our city. I encourage you to become a volunteer, become a tutor or a mentor. Let someone invest in your life and enrich your life in the same way that you can invest in theirs. And if someone calls at the bridge to nowhere, don't beat them up. Just say to them, have you ever considered that people live there? Have you ever been there? So I guess what I'm challenging all of us to today is to rethink community. Rethink the way in which we see people, particularly people who don't look, look like us, people who don't live in the same neighborhoods as us, people who don't speak the same language, knowing that each and every time that we make someone invisible, we open the door to unimaginable human suffering. Thank you. <laughs>